Okay, YouTube, I decided to go ahead and make another video. Again, I uh, made that first video about kind of getting the fire going in the wet weather, which it has been raining here in a few days. And I decided uh, with all this stuff that's been happening as far as the storms of 2014, uh, this is my just my everyday carry, which we've already had the one everyday carry, which is on your person. But this is the bag I normally carry with me during maintenance. I can be anywhere from cutting grass to working at a treatment plant to climbing underneath a trailer because someone's water line had broke or has got a leak or whatever. And 90% uh, of the time, uh, actually 100% of the time, I've got to climb underneath there and fix it. But first you have to climb underneath there and you want to you know, get your coveralls and all that stuff. That's normally basically always at the work site. But then a lot of times, even then, you're going to get wet, nasty. And this is what I carry. Uh, this is what I call my vehicle bag. Uh, in my truck, I've got other stuff. And you, you always want spare clothing and spare stuff. So this is makes it not so much a need, but comfortability is the main thing. And uh, I'm just going to go through this bag and show you what I've got here. Uh, the first thing I have is just in the main compartment. This is nothing more than a Walmart bag. It's called a Protege, I think. It's uh, paid two, uh, ten dollars for it. It looks like it's made out of ripstop uh, material. I mean, it's been durable. It's, I've had it for quite a few years now, about four or five years, and uh, it's been been a good one. So, I'm, you know, I can't complain for ten bucks. Uh, spare set of jeans. Uh, depending upon the weather, we're still in the uh, wintery starting to spring. Uh, Sweatshirt, a little zipped up hoodie, uh, two normally, uh, t-shirts, and uh, two pairs of socks and two pairs of underwear. And uh, that's normally for just the big pouch. You can add more if you need it. Uh, if not, you know, the summertime I wouldn't have the jeans. I'd probably have maybe the jeans or another pair of uh, work pants. Uh, a pair of shorts, cargo shorts, uh, obviously the same other clothing you carry. Uh, like I said, you can add more, a little, if you want a little jacket or whatever the case may be. Uh, that's normally in my truck anyway, in the toolbox. Uh, on the side compartment here is my uh, uh, underarm deodorant. I've got some soap. Uh, Antibacterial soap, uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, some razors, uh, some tums, and some goodies headache powders, dental floss. Uh, that's basically in this compartment. And uh, this compartment here. Like I said, this bag is strictly because you're out and about, even over at a friend's house, you're helping them out, and all of a sudden, you know, he needs some extra hands. Uh, I've got some spare masks in case anything's in a dusty condition. You can wear that. Uh, also, a pair of mechanics gloves and a pair of good leather gloves. Obviously, hand sanitizer goes along good with the uh, antibacterial soap. Here's some uh, cutter insect repellent, uh, airborne, but this is actually not airborne. This is nothing more than a. Uh, I've got some uh, band aids in here. And that's all they are. You know, if you get a little cut or whatever, you got little band aids. Uh, again, in the truck is a small little first aid kit. This is something that's just basically I just carry in and out of the truck. A uh, little waterproof container here. Uh, has a lighter. I've got cotton balls and I've also got the uh, Q tips, like I did earlier in the video, for fire sorting capabilities along with the. Uh, hand sanitizer. Uh, got one glow stick. Uh, I threw that in there because it's uh, expires of, of, of 12, which is two years old. Uh, carry that in there anyway, just in case you need some extra light. It's already outdated. You need a glow stick of some sort of light. You can crack it open. And if it doesn't work, no big deal. Uh, due to the fact that you have other light sources. But I just put it in there because there's no sense of wasting it. If you can use it. If it goes bad, fine. So be it. Uh, another light sources here is I've got a uh, regular old LED light little little husky deal uh, I've got a headlamp and when I was packing this bag you know it came on it was just like you just bump it and all of a sudden it's on it's there and I'm like what the heck so I realized you know when you're carrying this bag 
What can I do? Well, it's an inexpensive $20 light. Pop this thing open, and it is, uses three triple A's. Take the center one out. Now, take it out, and just reverse it so all of them are facing the same way. Now that you've got it there, you can't accidentally have it come on. If you get to need it, you need it, even in the dark, you should be able, with dexterity, figure out where the middle is. If not, you've got your other light here and that can help you out. One more item here is I just happened to find this little pouch. Uh, is the Gerber clutch. It's a little multi-tool that's really kind of handy. And uh, I always have my regular multi-tool but if someone needs another one or you need another set of pliers or whatever the case may be, you have it. Uh, that's basically all I have here. Uh, I plan on adding to it. I've normally going to have some nitrile gloves, uh, a few other little uh, added items that will be going in here and I'll probably end up doing another one. But uh, like I said, I just thought I'd let you see what I carry here. Like I said, in the truck I've got my blankets, my foul weather gear, you know, rain ponchos, rain suits, all that stuff's with you. So kind of stays with you. This is by no means the so-called bug out bag or get home bag but technically it can be used because technically if I'm visiting some friends I've got to cross a body of water. I've got to cross a river or two but not in the same instance depending upon which way I go one is the same river and we're looking at about 150 feet swim and people say well that's not far. So when you got the current going it's, it's pretty far so you got to pick an area out and like I said you know, you've got marsh. It's not just woods. You got marsh, and you can't really walk in the marsh. So you got to pick an area where it's going to be solid, be able to get you on the other side to get to the mainland, so you can get home. So, uh, in that instance, I might have some sort of flotation aid to help me out. Uh, so it's good to have some sort of aid. And like I said, if worse comes to worse, then you throw a life jacket or a life uh, work vest there to help you out. Uh, if you were t to need, if you had any kind of bug out bag and you need to cross a body of water, you know, you can swim fine and dandily, but once hypothermia gets in, you lose all motor skills. So guess what? Uh, hopefully you'll have a life jacket on. If you lose all sorts of motor skills, you can wind up on the other side or wind up on the log and until you can get that stuff, dexterity back again if, if, you, if you do get it back. Uh, but I just thought, you know, what the heck, I'll just go ahead and do a video on what I carry. Uh, and by no means, like I said, this is the bug out bag. There's nothing more than I carry in the bag for comfortability in case you're working. And I hope you enjoyed the video, and there'll be more videos to come. It's raining. Uh, kind of just kind of making time. All right. Y'all have a good day. God bless you.